Hey, good morning, everybody. It is great to be with you for the morning briefing. It is a gloriously beautiful morning. Sunny and warm already. Flat calm seas behind me and some really great stuff going on, like a couple of really big black sea bass. I want to talk to you about down at La Bocana for our, our dear friend Martin Padilla. He's had some great fishing. More and more yellowfin pushing up the Baja coast. Pongaro south of the border are doing really good out of Ensenada and the San Diego fleet getting more of a taste of tuna along with all that Dorado. Of course, our local Dorado bite here has been absolutely phenomenal. It continues to be red hot and also some incredible bluefin tuna fishing for the Polaris Supreme and other guys up there near San Clemente Island. This is the morning briefing on the Friedman Adventures YouTube channel. All right, let me have one more sip of this delightful coffee. Oh, thank you so much for indulging me. I really appreciate it. I hope you're doing the same here this morning. A cup of tea, a cup of coffee, glass of milk, whatever it is that floats your boat. And we've got a lot to get into with you. And in just a few moments, I'm taking off to go to La Mirada, where I'm going to meet a friend of mine, Ali Lopez. And we're going to gather up a bunch of clothing for a family in Mexicali, Baja California, who lost their trailer home. Kids were burned in a fire. Adults were burned in a fire. I don't think too severely. I'll learn more from Ali this morning. But they lost everything. And since you have been so generous, my friends, well, then we've got a stockpile of clothing and other stuff that we're going to go and take some of those items and send them down to Mexicali. And then, of course, the rest of all that stuff we'll be distributing in Baja, California on the 6th of January, which is a very great and famous day down there in Mexico or in Catholic religions. It's the Epiphany or Dia de Reyes. We'll be handing that out down there. So can't wait. By the way, thousands of you are tuning in for the morning briefing. The other day we had over 10,000 of you join us here on the morning briefing. I want to thank you very, very much for that. All right. Usually I start in Ensenada. Let's go a little bit further south, not too much further, but La Bocana, where my friend Martin Padilla has been catching yellowtail with a bunch of friends of his and having a great time. But yesterday, one guy dropped down a dropper loop and he hung a big old black sea bass. You can see some of those fish here. And Martin, his dropper loop, I forget what he said, he tied it wrong or did something. He goes, doggone it, I'm just going to drop down a yo-yo. And then he hangs a fish that he estimated to be right under 200 pounds. So black sea bass down at La Bocana, excellent yellowtail fishing continuing down there. It's really a special time down there south of the border. Up to Ensenada will take you Arnie Mann. He tunes in every single Tuesday night for our live show, and he is an extraordinarily talented Good fisherman and a super nice guy. Arnie says that the kelps are producing excellent Dorado yellowtail. They're seeing more and more marlin down there, which is really good. There's a, an operation down there. I think it's called Mahi Mahi. And they are also seeing a lot of marlin down there in that neck of the woods. So that's great. It shows that we still have that south swell or that southerly influence of warm water moving up the coast and pushing up ultimately into Southern California and shoving with it all the species that like to inhabit that warm water. So excellent fishing for Pongaros south of the border. They're still catching bluefin. There's more yellowfin tuna. They've got that Dorado, the yellowtail on the kelps. Phenomenal stuff for all of us here in either Northern Baja or Southern California. It doesn't get a whole heck of a lot better than it is right now. By the way, with Martin, those black sea bass were so big, I asked him, were those two or three gaff fish? And he said, uh, we only had one gaff on the, on the ponga, which is pretty typical. And so all three guys grabbed a hold of the gaff and struggled to get that fish, black sea bass, on the ponga. Pretty incredible stuff indeed. All right, folks, let's talk about San Diego because San Diego fishing is pretty darn good right now. First of all, the Polaris Supreme. You know when you don't have time to take a shower, yet you've caught this big bluefin tuna? Well, there's an answer for you. Polaris Supreme, phenomenal fishing. They're getting in from a three-day trip, and they had nothing short of absolutely magnificent fishing 
on board the Supremus. They're bouncing around between Clemente and other areas. 105 on the bluefin tuna. 44 of the 105 fish were in the 100 to 215 pound class. Three day trip, Polaris Supreme. The kid running the Supreme, I mean, just from watching what goes on, is extremely talented. He does a great job. I spent some time with my friend Tommy Rothery, who sold the boat uh, just recently, the Polaris Supreme. And Tommy says, man, that kid has got it. He's really, really good. So that is so good to see. Many of those two, three day trips are doing very good. And other guys have a little bit of trouble from time to time as that bluefin acts like bluefin every once in a while, although it has settled and is biting really well. On that kind of a trip, you know, go back to what Joseph Martinez said on our broadcast, our live broadcast just the other night. You're going to need some heavy tackle. Two speed reels work really, really well. 100 to 130 pound is what I would recommend on the great fish that we're talking about. And it can be spectacular fishing as evidenced by the Polaris Supreme. Now, taking a look at those 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. boats and the overnight fleet, there are some misses. And that tuna took a little bit of a step backwards yesterday after that incredible day on the Malahini for my friend Bill Wilkerson, which you saw right here just the other day around the Coronado Islands. There's all kinds of bluefin and, and for many other miles away from there and yellowfin tuna. It's really, really impressive to see the sights there, but a little bit slower, perhaps just an off day. San Diego pe pecking away at those bluefin and yellowfin tuna. 30 to 40 pound floral carbon is the way to go with two O size hooks and Daiwa Sakana lures or something similar. Very good way to get a bite on the tuna. So you're looking for kelps to catch Dorado and some yellowtail, mostly Dorado, and then you can find those tuna and tossing that die with Zacana is a good way to go. Buenos dias, Valentino. And so remember to bring a variety of tackle. You definitely need to have a 30 to 40 pound fluorocarbon rig with a 2 -oh hook. www.opsinusa.com, put in FA at checkout. And you also need something heavier. And I'm talking about something in the 50, 60 pound. And then if you have one more with that 100 pound, bring it. By all means, don't leave your gear at home. You just never know. Grande, 36 guys, 17 Dorado, seven yellowfin, eight bluefin tuna on board there. Not bad, but again, a little bit more eh, finicky yesterday. Let's put it that way. Weather's great. It's going to stay that way. It's gorgeous right now. Most areas you're going to find flat calm seas and you can hardly beat that. All right, let's bounce up the coast and talk about what's going on down there. Dana Wharf, they're all over the Dorado. They've had great fishing there up here. LA Orange County based boats as we move up to San Pedro. Those guys, incredible Dorado fishing. The flotilla, however, is building. There are a lot of boats on this zone and that Dorado continues to bite. We may not be seeing every boat with those 100 plus scores but it is still phenomenal fishing anytime you get a shot at dorado here in southern california on three quarter day boats you've got to thank your lucky stars how blessed we truly are and so there were many boats with 30 40 dorado and then there were those guys with 100 plus native sun pursuit those guys have been having some phenomenal fishing the navigante out of redondo limiting out on Dorado. Once again, the limit here in the United States is 10 fish per angler. That's what they had on the Navagante. South of the border, Mexico, two fish per rod. So, man, I'll tell you, some really outstanding fishing going on. Gale Force, 20 guys, 54 Dorado, a couple of yellowtail to go along with that. On board the Victory, uh, they had, I think, um, 50 plus on the Dorado yesterday. Some really good fishing going on. Joel Lopez, he was on the pursuit yesterday and Joel offers this advice. He said the guys who were catching were using 20 to 25 pound fluorocarbon and a 1-0 size hook, taking your time to choose a good hot bait and nice grade, a lot of eight to 12 pound fish. Joel, Thanks for sharing that on our YouTube channel by leaving a comment. I deeply appreciate it. Marcus Fain was on board the Victory 54 Dorada yesterday. He had a great time 
Great trip with his friends, and it really sounded good. Western Pride, 56 Dorado. Freelance, 59 Dorado. All these votes have a lot of people, okay? I'm not going through the people count, but they're way up there on that. Enterprise, what a trip out of Pierpoint Landing. 141 on the Dorado as Mitch ran the boat and did an absolutely phenomenal job. So Joel shared some information on how everybody was getting better. He was just there. We deeply appreciate him doing that. So remember, and sometimes you can even drop down. If you get on a day where they're not biting that well, there's so many boats that it's really spread the bite out, you can even drop down to 20 pounds. But I'm going to stick with what Joel recommended. All right, Chef Jason and Anthony Amalfitano were on our live show, and they were saying they're going to go out and catch some Dorado. So the question is, did they catch or did they screw it up? And the answer is, how could they screw it up? Because they had Dave Hansen's guide service on their side. And I was kind of overhearing the conversation going on about where they should fish. And I heard Dave saying something like, well, do you guys want to catch boats or do you want to catch Dorado? And Jason was laughing and then they went on from there. So in other words, Dave had some spots away from the flotilla and Jason and Anthony went down there. I won't say where because Dave said he would kill me, but they went down there and just murdered the Dorado. Over 20 Dorado had great fishing. They were so busy, they didn't have any time to shoot video and take photos. Well, they did a little bit, but there's a couple photos for you. They had a great time. And man, I'll tell you, this Dorado fishing is absolutely phenomenal. Tommy Holland, Captain Tommy Holland, asked a rhetorical question the other day. When are we gonna see some blue marlin? Because they love to nibble on these Dorado. And it would not surprise me to see a Wahoo or a blue marlin. It's really crazy what we've got going on here. Some excellent fishing and once again, some great tackle tips from Joel who said it was a phenomenal day on board the pursuit. Joel, one more time, thank you, my friend. Really, really appreciate you helping the Freedman Adventures family. All right, so, you know, I mean, most boats are on this Dorado right now. Uh, we'll talk about the islands, but that's where most of it has been. Now, incidentally, the Thunderbird yesterday, he was out, and some of these overnight boats are in a zone where the Dorado are not biting all that well. It's weird. You know, you have this Dorado locally here, and it's chewing up a storm, but other areas remain a little finicky. Not for lack of fish. We see fish everywhere we go, but sometimes they just don't want to bite. But on the Thunderbird, they had 21 nice grade yellowfin tuna, and that is in our future, folks. I mean, if we ever run out of a Dorado, and it seems like an impossibility at this point, there's so many of them around. If we ever were to run out, however, I gotta tell you, those yellowfin are going to join the party in northern Baja and southern California. They already have, but they're really going to join the party. I mean, the light switch is going to go on, and someone's going to even shove it up through the wall because the water's warm, there's bait around, and those fish are acclimating. They're getting used to their environment. They've moved in and settled, and when they do that, they start looking for Taco Bell and uh, McDonald's and fast food joints. And some of those fast food joints have a hook in them. And that's when those little devils are going to get caught. And it's looking really good. So once again, some 5 to 10 pound yellowfin tuna around. But a lot of 25 to 50 plus pound fish have moved in. That is great signal and sign. we got 74 degree water in some areas right now. It is phenomenal. The area where the bluefin are being taken up to around San Clemente. Great weather. Going to blow a little bit this afternoon, but not bad. Once again, weather is great. It's a good time for you to get out. By the way, I think our Amigo trip is now sold out, but we may have a trip or two, and you want to jump on the waiting list, please do that. And now we have just a few spots left, a few spots left on our final two two-day trips on the Pride out of 22nd Street Landing in San Pedro. Fishing has been phenomenal. Just look in the show description. Just look there, and you'll be able to see the trips, send me a text, and book. ASAP because this is a year that is going to go down in the annals of sport fishing history. It's really, really that good. It's pretty darn crazy. All right, islands down there, Todo Santos Island, around Ensenada. Uh, a lot of yellows in there on the islands. You saw what's going on down at La Bocana, good fishing. Same thing at Todo Santos, same thing at the Coronado Islands. That has been 
such good fishing overshadowed by this great offshore stuff that is going on but at the islands you get good conditions and you can pick off 50 to nearly 100 yellows there at the Coronado Islands with bass and barracuda and all that. And then right outside of there, you're catching really, really good amounts of the tuna and the drotter and everything else. Phenomenal. Up there at San Clemente Island, there are some really good days there. And there are other days when the Navy has shut down some areas or the sea lions are driving everybody crazy. But you can catch 20 to 50 yellowtail at SCI right now. But once again, most of the guys are offshore looking around for that right kelp or finding the yellowfin tuna like the Thunderbird did yesterday. Um, and then Channel Islands in general, a lot of rock fishing going on, occasional hit on the halibut and white sea bass, not all that bad. On the coast, once again, a lot of the boats are offshore right now, uh, finding an occasional pocket of barracudas still, not much. Uh, a few bass, private boaters are doing really well on sand and calico bass, but they don't need that much fish and they can get anchored up on the spot and catch fish. So, uh, you know, from down there in Ensenada, the Punta Banda area, good calico fishing, all the way up the coast, spotty bass fishing, some barracuda, occasional yellowtail. Um, wouldn't surprise me to see some really good yellow fishing in the fall, maybe on the horseshoe, uh, maybe down there off La Jolla, areas like that. Too much yellowtail pushed up here, and some of those have invaded the islands and the coastal regions. Hopefully, that's going to turn on here. Up there in Redondo, they're even subject to catch a Dorado or two. They had two on the half-day boat, Redondo Special, the other day. A lot of rockfish up there. And up in the Channel Islands, same thing. Not much barracuda recently, but still a possibility for some bass and barracuda. A lot of reliance on the rockfish up there right now. All right, it's phenomenal. It can't get much better. It's awesome. And we've got more fish moving in. So things are changing all the time, and it's looking absolutely fantastic. I can't thank you enough. Once again, over 10,000 people the other day watched the morning briefing. Thousands of you are watching every day. I really can't thank you enough for your great support. I'm off to the warehouse, the Gallagher Staging Warehouse in La Mirada to get that clothing together for that family in Mexicali. And of course, I will be monitoring and watching for you all day long. If I need to come back with a special update, you are guaranteed of that. Once again, thanks everybody. Really, really appreciate your great support. If you like our stuff, please subscribe, share with a friend, and hit the like button. It helps us so much if you do that. Thanks again. Take care, and I will see you soon.